Hello there, Pisces. Welcome to your tarot reading. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm glad to get this video out for you guys in time. I feel like there's some much, possibly much needed advice that might be coming through. Um, I remember the last month's reading that I did for you. It came out a little bit late and I apologize for that. Um, but I feel like many of you were in need of some guidance, like you, you feel a little bit stuck. So I feel like you were watching videos, looking for some answers, looking for some confirmation and especially, you know, uh, validation regarding the path that you're about to take, the decision or the choice that you're about to make. And so I see this reading as a little bit more of like a continuation of that. But I do see a lot of changes um, have also taken place. So you might have made some major decisions. And so we're kind of like uh, in a resting phase, okay? Waiting for things to kind of like play out. And so I hope this reading finds you well. I hope you've enjoyed the holidays with your loved ones, your family members, and that um, this resonates with you and that it's also helpful and pertinent for you as we navigate the energies. Um, so I saw two images for you, actually three. So let me just relay all of them because I have a habit of like forgetting as soon as I relay one, I start talking about the cards. I, I start to forget. So first of all, um, I saw this rag doll. It's just looking at me. So it's like a raggedy Ann doll. It's made out of like, um, uh, yarn or, you know, some type of canvas material It's very beige and very bland. Okay. Um, the doll has like brownish auburn dark brown hair and it has black buttons for eyes so the buttons are kind of sewn onto the head of the doll and then it has like a little uh a little button nose and then the mouth is made from it's like a smiling face and it's made from stitches like um stitching uh kind of like the line on the football so it's like stitched up and curved into a smile and then it has cross stitches across it and so I'm just staring at it and it's just staring at me it's just looking at me it's not really moving and I'm really drawn to the the, the stitching on the mouth okay it feels to me like it's something forced like a, a forced smile you know something that's not natural but it's just created that way or like a forced smile or forcing a smile and then the fact that it's stitched up, I just feel like it wants to talk. There are things that it wants to say, but it's stitched up so it can't really, you know, say, okay? So th that's the first thing. The second image that I saw, I see this scene in the office. It's like a very mundane office scene. It's, it's strange. So there's this man, he's in an office and uh, he's kind of walking around there like cubicles, right? He's just kind of look, walking around, looking around. Um, he's probably like in a managerial or a supervisory position where he's kind of looking at the employees walking around to see where everyone is and to see if anybody needs him. So he's not surveilling. He's not doing that. He's just there in case they have questions, in case they need him. So he's making himself very available to his subordinates, right? And uh, he's wearing like a gray suit. He looks really nice. White shirt, gray suit and uh, a really dark blue tie um he looks like he's about 40 uh 45 50 so around that age group he doesn't look like you know he exceptional like um there's nothing about him that really stood out but i, I just feel like he looks really nice and he has like you know charisma and uh there's this woman she looks about a little bit younger than him she's walking by and they kind of look at each other you know, he's like following her with his eyes, not in a creepy way, but he's kind of looking at her. And then she turns the corner and she looks at him. So like, it was weird. There's no, mo there, there's no conversation. There's no talking. Okay. And this is like, um, on the heels of looking at that doll and that doll is just looking straight at me. It's not really saying anything. And so this scene too, the two people are just looking at each other and she's also, she's wearing a white um, blouse, you know, the button up blouse and she's wearing like a gray skirt. So everything is really like gray and white and, and just kind of bland, very professional, like office environment. And they're just kind of looking at each other. There's great chemistry between the two of them, but they're just kind of looking at each other, watching each other pass by. And then as soon as she kind of disappears around the corner, 
I see him holding his hand like this, you know, and, and he has a ring, okay? So I, I was thinking like, oh, he can't say anything. He can't make a move. He can't do anything because he's married. So that I was thinking that. And so then it drifts into the next scene. And this is where um, I'm starting to forget. So I'm glad I'm trying to say this out for the two, uh, for, for you guys. Um, I can't for the life of me remember the third picture. Okay, so I guess we'll just move on and then hopefully if it's important, it'll come back or as I talk about the cards, it'll come back. So I apologize. So when I saw that first doll, I was thinking, this is definitely you. This is your energy, Pisces, because I feel like you have some secrets that you're keeping. Okay, and I, I feel like it's not one of those things where... Um, like juicy gossip or anything like that. I, I, I don't feel that way. I feel like there are things about your life or about you or what you're dealing with or what you're experiencing where you feel like other people might not understand. Other people might not be able to put themselves in your shoe. Okay. And I, I feel like, you know, the, the concept of like, you're going through the motions and if you meet people and you know they're sitting there kind of venting to you about their day about their kids about their dogs about their work about their job about their life and i feel like this um i feel like there might be a situation where you're kind of listening you know kind of like half listening and you're thinking like you know wow if you walked a mile in my shoes the problems that you're saying right now are not really problems. You would know that these aren't really major problems. And so I feel like for many of you, you have been through a lot. You have accumulated a series of life experiences from a very young age. And I feel like you have dealt with, you know, a lot of hardships. So I'm feeling that. And I feel that for many of you, um, you know, a lot of the times when we deal with hardships and adversity, we can either grow from it and, uh, you know, flourish and thrive, or we can kind of let it um, take over us and make us jaded and bitter. And I feel like there were times in your life where you, you, you took it in, in strides, okay? You're just like, it's okay, I can weather this, I can get through this, I can drudge on, I can, you know, fight another day and things are going to get better the um uh, i'll turn around the corner okay and then you know I'll, I'll look at life in a different way or things will will get better it's like that light at the end of the tunnel and so i feel that you might have gone through a series of these um life-changing moments or events or you know even significant events and i do feel at a point where you you are starting to feel a little bit jaded you are starting to feel like, you know, this is not what I anticipated. This is not what I planned. This is not what I had in mind for myself at this age, at this phase in my life, at this station. So I do feel many of you are at a point where you start to feel the heaviness of it, the, the accumulation of it, and it's starting to weigh you down. Okay. And I feel like the spiritual advice here from the universe is we plaster on a smile and we keep going, okay? And kind of like that doll, okay? Um, the, the smile is kind of like plastered on and it puts on a brave face, it puts on a smile. So from the outsider's perspective looking in, they look at you and you know, people that look at you, they're not aware of everything that you have dealt with. And so I feel that you feel as if you can't really relate, you can't really um, tell people what you've been going through because they don't understand. Some of you feel like, I need to soldier on, I need to handle this on my own, I need to be strong and I need to just, you know, rough it out. And I do sense that there's a willing listener in your midst. There's somebody like possibly even a, a group of people that are more than willing to, you know, share your experience. If you let them, there's a support around the corner. There are people that are interested in what you have to say. And so it would be beneficial for you to kind of like 
give your experiences a, a, a voice, you know, to be able to express what you have been through and to be able to confide in another person and to be able to, you know, just kind of like not have to put on that brave face when you feel like you've had a crappy day, not have to plaster on a smile when you inside you don't feel like smiling, when inside you're just like in turmoil, you're stressed out, you're not happy, it's okay to display these other emotions, even though you might not feel like they are pleasant. I feel like people are trying to get to know the real you. And it's, it's important for you to kind of like allow other people in and to share what it is that's on your mind and to also understand that you have willing friends, you have willing listeners, you have others that are trying to get to know you, that are cr trying to, you know, um, understand what you've been through, okay? Um, I feel like for many of you, um, and you know, I felt this for a really long time that I've been doing Piscean readings. Um, you guys love very sincerely, very naively, and very wholeheartedly, okay? You love with your mind, your heart, your body, and your soul. And um, I feel like a lot of the times, you know, you might be aware, people do take advantage of you. And so it is really important for you to be cautious and discerning about who you give your time and your energy and your resources and yourself to, okay? A lot of Piscean people, um, there's this a little bit of like of a, a, a savior complex where you might be attracted to people that might be a work in progress or might be a project. So that means you want to be, you want to play the role of the caretaker in the relationship. You want to take care of them. You want to make them better. You want to fix whatever is broken. You want to, you know, heal all of their ills. And just to be fair, you know, for yourself and also just for, for the equality in the relationships. Relationships are supposed to be give and take and equal. And so when you give so much like that and expect nothing in return, it, it sort of like disincentivize the other person to step up, to give in equal measure and to, you know, come to you correct. And so what I feel here is a process where you have been giving a lot of yourself and you feel, you're starting to understand that, you know, the people around you or the people that you have given a lot of yourself to might not be worthy and might not be able to reciprocate and might be taking from you and might be um, selfishly just, you know, like leeching off of you. And so it's really important for us to once again, you know, demand what it is that we want from other people. And when something is not fair, it's important for us to give our grievance a voice, okay? Say what you mean and especially demand what it is that you're worth because I feel like you have left a lot of things unsaid, you have put on a brave face, you have allowed I don't want to say that it's a it's a, a process where you're not conscious of it. I feel that many of you are conscious of it. Many of you are very conscious of the fact that you give a lot of yourself. You try to hold back, but you don't know how. And so for this month, starting in this new year, one of the major things that you need to learn is to, you know, put up your defenses, take care of yourself, nurture yourself first, let other people wait, okay? Because I can assure you, you're dealing with very impulsive, like emotionally irrational uh, people, people who are very, very impatient, okay? So what I'm feeling here is you have a bunch of people around you who are very impatient, just like very impulsive, very rash. So if they want something, they go to the first person, the most convenient person or the person that's closest to them. They ask for that. 
and then while the other person is mulling over the decision they get impatient and then they go to the next person and so further down the line they're going to get to you and so if all of the, those other people have not responded to them and they they're going down the chain right and they get to you if all those other people they've approached have not responded the way that they want and they're coming to you what makes you think it would be a good idea for you to respond to them and give them whatever it is that they're asking right and then i also feel like you should also understand that they're soliciting other people as well and so you saying no is not going to hurt them or affect them personally does that make sense so don't worry about them getting mad don't worry about them being sad don't worry about hurting their feelings because i feel like you're just one of the people in a chain or in a string of people and so if it doesn't bring you um comfort or if something if somebody is asking a lot of you that would really inconvenience you or would really bother you to give to them then don't do it pull back your energy okay so <clears throat> enough about that so going back to the original message here i feel like you know the way that you're showing up here is the high priestess i'm seeing a lot of like um female empowerment in this spread role reversals or like at least you know gender role reversal um and then also defying or kind of like overturning gender gender stereotypes or expectations which is great because i feel like you know we all embody the feminine and the masculine and we have to exercise you know make decisions and 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 behave in a way that where these two energies flow harmoniously so every once in a while we need to step up operate more from that yang energy like the more masculine energy when we are assertive when we are aggressive when we go after what we want and then in interpersonal relationships and in our lives and the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat others sometimes we have to you know step into more of that yin energy where we are nurturing caring and soft okay so this um spread indicates to me that for many of you you're operating more from that masculine energy stepping up and and demanding what it is that you need what it is that you want and then i also feel somebody else from outside of you somebody else another person is bringing you this drive this ambition for you to want to um do more to demand more like they're making you aware of your needs and your wants and your purpose and they're making you crave and desire a lot more from your life okay whatever you're not getting i feel like you're becoming more demanding like i need that i need this and then also um with this high priestess this is about inner knowledge inner knowing self awareness and we can't really go out into the world and create things manifest things and even demand things unless we know exactly what we want so this is the the burgeoning or the very beginning of the process of self awareness okay because for too long you have lived in this space seven of wands this is sort of like I don't want to hog the limelight. I don't want to um you know be the center of attention. I don't deserve it. I don't want to you know up, like upset other people. I don't want to make demands for myself because that feels selfish. And in a way you do feel that that way. You do feel that by making demands out of other people. I'm making myself more important than other people. And yet other people have always made demands of you. So, just a little bit food for thought. Because you don't want to be in this position. This is the limelight. This is somebody with a lot of other people looking on. You don't want to say no to people because you don't want to make them angry. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You don't want to put them in a rough position. And so I feel like, you know, you cater to, you help 
and I feel that you give and give and give because you don't want to be in this position where you feel like who am I to make demands well you are important too and it's really this is the month for you to come into that sense of awareness that you know every time I give of myself when I don't want to I deprive myself of that time of that resource of that energy and energy flows okay but it's also very finite if you give and give and give you end up very depleted and so there needs to be an equal exchange here and I feel like for so long for such a long time there hasn't been an equal exchange and then this also leads me to believe that you're dealing with somebody that might be taking from you sapping you um, sapping your energy your resources resource comes out very strongly and then you are aware enough where you're just like okay I'm pulling back I'm drawing my limits you know I'm making my demarcation in the sand right and then as soon as you draw back, you set your limits, the other person is just like, why are you selfish? Why are you holding back? Why are you not helping me? And so they're starting to make more demands of you and they're starting to think that you're unreasonable. And you know, whatever this is, it could be guilt tripping, it could be throwing tantrums, it could be whatever it is. I just feel like it's making you reassess it's making you reassess whether or not you did the right thing, but I can assure you, you're doing the right thing because you're really drawing back and you're really taking care of yourself because you understand that it's important, okay? And that the other person also needs to be able to handle things on their own. Um, for many of you, I feel like you're really thinking about, you know, your saving, your, your retirement, your um, resources checking your bank account, uh, talking to like a financial planner, um, talking to somebody about financial planning, okay? So this is the Eight of Pentacles. And I feel like in this card, it's about, you know, creating more of something, working your magic, investing, uh, thinking about long-term yield, thinking about avenues for you to invest your money, to invest your resources, how to make your money work for you. For some of you, this could even be buying property, uh, making sure that your property appreciates and then you know wanting to keep it for a certain amount of years before you sell off the property. So I feel like you're doing some massive maneuvering, okay? Conjuring things up, uh, manifesting, as well as like talking to somebody who might be very savvy when it comes to financial resources, like a financial planner, or even an investor so that you can make things work for you. I feel like you're facing, um, there There would be a lot of people around you. There's like bickering I'm seeing here. And um, I'm seeing like, people might not agree with the choices that you make, okay? People might not agree, but you have your heart set on something. And so you don't need to, you know, um, explain to anybody. You don't need to justify yourself. You don't need to justify the decisions that you're making for yourself. And so you have the gift of insight and intuition. And, you know, um, I, I feel like this is a very good, like savvy sense when it comes to business. You know how to make money. It's just when people pull from your energy, that's when you find yourself very depleted. And then I also feel like there might be bickering, there might be disagreements, there might be things are happening around you where people are not really agreeing or in accordance with like whatever it is that you're planning. They're trying to talk you into a different avenue. They're trying to talk you into doing something that they want. Whatever it is that they want is not appropriate for you. So stick with your gut instincts and st stay on your course because I feel like other people's um, opinion really shouldn't matter. They, it should not matter. For others of you too, I'm feeling almost like you're thinking about leaving a work environment that might be a little bit um, tenuous, okay? So I feel like there might have been a lot of like, um, it, it's very cutthroat. Five of Wands, bickering, mindless bickering, not seeing eye to eye, ideological differences. 
And then we have here the Seven of Wands. This is kind of like a cutthroat environment where people are willing to um, kind of like exploit somebody's weakness. Whatever someone says gets used against them or, you know, somebody throwing somebody else under the bus. So I feel like there is a situation here in a work environment around you, not happening to you. It's around you where people are a little bit childish. Um, the environment might be a little bit toxic. You might not think that you're, you're moving, um, you know, it, th there's like no vertical movement. There's lateral movement. You're getting, you know, the same pay in a different position, possibly same pay, same uh, grade or whatever it is. But I feel like there isn't, you know, like uh, f um, upward movement. And so you're making plans to see what other options are available for you. You're kind of spinning your wheels here and you are seeing that and you're also coming into the awareness that the longer you stay here, the more that, um, the more that this hostility or this, um, you know, this energy in the work environment is going to kick up. The more longer you stay, the more dust is going to gather and you're aware of that and you're trying to check yourself out and, and figure something out. In the meantime, things are still, um, I, I feel like it, it's still stable and safe enough, but you are exploring other options. And that's why I feel like, you know, you're keeping your plans very close to your chest. You're not sharing your ideas. You're not sharing your plans. You're not really letting people, a lot of people know about it. You know, hence that smile on the rag doll's face and the stitching around the mouth. There are secrets that are not being said, okay? So moving on to this portion of the reading. This is a relationship here that I'm, I'm seeing, okay? So we're gonna move this away. Um, so going back to that second scene that I saw, okay? It's just the man and the woman. And I apologize for my viewers who are in same-sex relationships um, or interested in, you know, same-sex partners um, the, the images just come out very heterosexual, so I just, I want to apologize. Um, either way, whoever it is that you're dealing with, whatever uh, race, whatever gender, whatever um, person that you're dealing with, um, I do feel for many of you, um, you might be the, per the, the man with the ring, okay? The man who is committed, he is in a, a relationship. And the relationship is feeling a little bit like um, the ball and chain, okay? So forgive that, me for that expression. I have here the four of wands. This is a marriage. This is, you know, stability. This is like holy matrimony. And then I have the eight of swords resting underneath it. The eight of swords is like bondage. It feels a little bit uncomfortable. It feels like it's hard to break out of and it can feel very restrictive. For some of you, you might be in a relationship and you're questioning the longevity of the relationship. You're questioning, you know, are we in it for keeps? Is my partner still, um, still wants to work at this with me? Do I still want to work at this with my relationship partner? And then I feel for many of you, there might be like a change of heart where you're in a situation, but it's, it's no longer fun and exciting and, and you know, new love. Like it, it's, it's no longer, it, or maybe it has surpassed that puppy love stage. And now we're getting down to the nitty gritty of like the, the, the domesticity, the living together, the life that we've created for ourselves. Are we still excited about each other are we still happy in this relationship are we still willing to work at it and others you might be in a relationship where you don't know where things are headed and you might not feel inspired or passionate or or in love in in that relationship anymore and you might be thinking as well you know like how how else your life could come could, could turn to turn out you might be thinking, I, I don't feel like it's, you know, like stepping out of a relationship, exploring other options, but I do feel like something here just feels a little bit restrictive. Something in this relationship feels a little bit like, I'm not sure if it's going to last through the winter, you know? So that's what I'm sensing. 
And I feel like for many of you, there could be a situation here where there is communication or another person in your midst that's bringing this change of heart. And I just want to say, I just want to say for those who are watching and if, especially if you're resonating with this, I just feel like this home situation happened first, okay? There's something innately possibly unhappy or, 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 or like dissatisfying in this to begin with. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is if this is something you feel is worth salvaging, is worth um, working at and, and is worth saving, then you need to take the steps now in order to correct it. Because I feel like the root of the problem is here. It's not this outside person. I feel like it's here. This is where things need to be fixed and mended and repaired. And I also feel like for many of you, um, it might lack excitement. It might gotten it might have gotten into like a sense of uh, you know like routine, you know routine like something is very routine something is no longer exciting something is no longer passionate something is no longer like um it's no longer in that puppy love stage and so how do we bring it back how do we revive it what can we do in order to make it better right but either way regardless of whether or not you're dealing with this i do feel there is a a, a new energy we have here the Knight of Wands. This is like the embodiment of passion and chemistry. And then we have as well the Page of Wands. This is the same type of energy. And so it's going through a maturation stage. Okay, it starts out as the Page and then it uh, escalates into the Knight. And so what I'm feeling is there's somebody in your midst, okay, regardless of whether or not you're dealing with this. There's somebody in your midst that's bringing you kind of like a whole new world, a whole new set of eyes to look at your life and the life that you've created. Because I feel like it's very different. Like there, there is a little bit of like domesticity here in your life that is very different from what this, this adventure, this excitement, this, this sense of like, you know, bouncing around, um, being nomadic. So there's domesticity. There is, like a nomadic lifestyle and those two things clash but in the process of you know getting to know the other person unearthing their lifestyle and and looking at the way they live their life their life seems very exciting you're very drawn to it you're very drawn to this person because they're like your polar opposites that's what it feels like to me like um polar opposites and then i also feel like there's um there's a, a boldness, an impulsiveness, and a rashness coming through from this person because they, they're they very, um, I, I feel like they're just very courageous. They're very action oriented. They do things, get things done. They don't sit around and mull over things. And they're very like unapologetic. They live their life the way that they want. They don't have to answer to anybody. They don't have to justify any of their decisions the way that you justify your decisions. The way that you have to, you know, get the, the support and the um, okay from the people around you before you make major life decisions. This person is like action oriented. They make life decisions and they make decisions for themselves without having to consult people. They don't care what people say. And so this devil may care attitude has worked out really well for them, has gotten them exactly where they want to go. And so you're looking at this person and I feel like there is definitely attraction. There's definitely admiration. And also, you know, looking up to this person, wanting to emulate and copy that lifestyle or, or the way that they, they carry themselves. They're so assertive and so self-assured. And I feel that you wish you could be that way. You wish that you could, you know, make decisions without having to second guess. And so if this is a romantic partner or a relationship partner or even a love interest, 
this is someone that will come to you in a heartbeat okay um i feel almost like this sense of somebody is coming to somebody else's rescue okay um and you know that the, oh yeah so the third image uh, okay, so now it's coming back. So you know the the um, Warner Brothers cartoon. For those of you who are not familiar, it's basically a series of like cartoon sketches. And there's one where um, there's a damsel in distress. She's tied up, right? She's bound with rope, and they left her on a railroad track. And there's this cartoon train coming towards her. And she's screaming out and you know uh, a man comes by and, and rescues her so that's like what I'm sensing but once again I mentioned that this is a reading that is all about role reversals that is all about um, like overturning gender stereotypes and so what I feel is there might be a situation here where you know if you're like the, the masculine energy you might be in the relationship and you feel very stuck and very trapped and there's somebody coming into the picture and they're breathing life into your life they're breathing breathing new air they're bringing like a, a breath of fresh air into your life and they're um fixing your problems and they're helping you make sense of things and they're helping you navigate an environment and they're very exciting very dynamic and then I also feel like it's this situation. One person feels very, very stuck. And the other person is like the knight in shining armor. But the knight is not always, you know, the, the, the masculine energy or the man. So I feel like there might be a gender role reversal here. Where if you're the one feeling very, very stuck, the person that's coming into the picture is, you know, the one that's going to set you free the one that provides all the answers. And so what I feel is for some of you, there's a sense of independence, you know, shouldering the responsibilities on your own. You know, you're, you're telling people like, if you walked a mile in my shoes, you would look at your life with full appreciation because like, honestly, I feel that many of you have been through a lot of difficult life experiences. It's a series of life decisions that you have made over the years. And I feel like you've put yourself in challenging position and you have grown from it. But I also feel like you have, you have also become a little bit jaded. And so you were very stoic. You roughed it out. You did it on your own. You shoulder the responsibilities. You didn't whine. You didn't complain. So you have this sense of resilience and inner strength. And then because you're so stoic and, and self-sufficient, the fact that you're like this now, like, wh what do I do? Where do I go? What's my next step? Why can't I figure things out? I need to be able to make this decision on my own. And I feel like the fact that somebody else is coming through, wanting to help, wanting to offer, you know, a hand, wanting to come and rescue you, you don't trust it. And it might be really hard for you to accept this person. It might be very scary for you to trust this person because, you know, honestly, the fire energy is really passionate and like it is very, you know, on the forefront. It's very, it's very bold. And so you might not trust that it's gonna be sustaining. You might not trust that it's going to be long lasting you might not trust in the stability of it and so while it's a fan like it's a good fantasy you can play out the scenario in your mind you don't trust this person and i feel like the one of the reasons why you don't trust it is because you have had to do a lot of things on your own and so you trust yourself and you cannot accept this offer because you're very scared that it's going to burn out, that the person might not be around for the long haul. And I feel like, you know, you, I, I feel somebody is like admiring from afar. Okay, going back to that scene, that uh, the, the second scene that I saw 
the man and the woman. There's no words, conversation, or anything exchanged between the two of you. You might not be in a position where you're talking to each other. You might be, you know, just not communicating, not expressing your feelings, not, they themselves might not be expressing their feelings, but underneath, I feel like there is a lot of chemistry. There's an undercurrent of love and respect and, you know, um, just, I feel like there is definitely a lot of uh, love that can be explored, that should be explored, whatever the situation is. But I feel like there are constraints. I feel like no one is really expressing themselves because they're not in a position where they can give of themselves. A lot of it might be physical things, you know, like another marriage, another relationship partner, or it might not be the right environment because it's a work situation, right? But then I also feel a lot of it is emotional emotional hang-ups, uh, lack of trust, not wanting to, to put ourselves out there because the other person might not feel the same way. If you're dealing with a situation where you're kind of looking at somebody and you see them looking back at you, I feel that the, the feelings are very reciprocal, okay? So the feelings are there, it's definitely worth exploring. So I feel like the message for you in the love department is to give your is for me to kind of like give you that nudge okay that the feelings are definitely there this is somebody on the surface they might seem very rash or and impulsive okay but i do feel there's a lot of heart and soul and there's a lot of stability that can be had uh, what's crowning this um, person is the seven of cups and the seven of cups is kind of like you know um the the wandering the, the wandering nomad, okay? I wanna go here, I wanna travel there, I wanna settle down here, I wanna, um, you know, stay there for a few months and then go to a new location. So this is always someone who's chasing after something a little bit novel or a little bit exotic. However, with this energy, opportunities come to them because they're open-minded and open-hearted. They grab life by the horns, they explore all opportunities, and so because they're in the space of being easygoing and being, um, I want to say like spontaneous, the opportunities come to them. It's not like they're going out looking for greener pastures or, you know, uh, soliciting people. I, I don't feel like they're ever in a position where they have to solicit because they're living with their life very open, with their heart very open and with their mind very open that opportunities just land on their lap. And so I can assure you, this is not somebody who's going to be here today, gone tomorrow. If they commit, they commit wholeheartedly. However, because of this lack of communication between the two of you, they might not know how you feel. They might not know that there is potential here to explore with you unless you give them a sign unless you give them the little nudge, unless you take this situation seriously and really think about the impact that they're making in your life and especially in your psyche, because I feel like somebody is really, you know, stamping their presence or, or their, um, seeing this stamp, the seal. Somebody is really making their mark on you. And I feel like, you know, they're making their mark on your psyche in your life and they're a huge force in your life right now and you're afraid to get burned you're afraid to explore it you're afraid to go there you're afraid to you're afraid that their lifestyle is going to overturn everything that you built for yourself everything that you consider very valuable very stable very predictable or even very um very tangible Whatever it is that you've, you've worked really hard to build, I feel that you are afraid that this situation might overturn that, okay? At the center of the reading here, we have, um, this is a symphony, okay? What I feel is the moon is your card, Pisces. This is reaching out through music, through subliminal messages, through like, um, 
you know it's music without like w without the singing without the lyrics without the 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 verbal expression but it's trying to convey something and and you know music is about conveying deep 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 emotions and then i also feel like this is a musician as well he's got his little trumpet announcing his arrival so i feel like somebody is making themselves known to you whether or not you are aware but they are definitely making a gesture, making a, um, a, an effort at flirting the way that they know how. I feel like they have already told you how they feel. And then I feel that you're trying to draw them, but the way in which you do things is very subtle, it's very under the current. And I feel like this person might be missing the signals. So. If that's what you're dealing with, if you're feeling like you're sending out these subliminal messages and these signals, but for whatever reason, they're not coming closer, I feel that you have to, you know, be a little bit more bold with your actions, okay? Because this person's got a torch for you. Um, I don't feel like this is something that will fizzle out and leave you heartbroken. I, I don't feel that at all. Um, and I, I definitely don't feel like this is somebody that, you know, is, um, I, I don't feel like this is somebody that just wants, it's like, it's not a love them and leave them type of a person. I feel that they need a little bit more reassurance, a little bit more ego stroking, a little bit more of a definitive answer from you or a definitive gesture that you're in before they pursue you full force and they kind of need that nudge okay so if anything i feel like i need to tell you you know I'm, I'm, I'm i feel like i'm guided to just nudge you to go in this direction all right um pisces i hope that it is helpful for you this reading i feel that if you let you know the relationship um if you want to work at this relationship for those who are in a, an existing relationship and you feel like the chemistry and the excitement has died down a little bit, this can prove to be a very fruitful month to kind of re-inject romance into the love relationship. If you have this person and you're wondering, you know, what's going on, I feel that they need a little bit more nudging from your end in order for them to come at you full force, okay? And they will. I do feel that they will. And um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I hope the reading is helpful. And um, I'll be back for, the, um, for next month's reading. I wish you all a very happy, happy holiday season. Enjoy your time. Take it easy. And I'll talk to you guys soon. And for those who are still um, emailing me about readings, I have a link in the description box below for a uh, colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. She's a psychic and she's based out of California. For those who are interested in the reading, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. She's phenomenal, she's great, and um, she has been very, very helpful in providing me with insights over the years, so I recommend her wholeheartedly. Um, I wish you the best, Pisces. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys soon.